Hello. In this video, we are going to discuss the chlorination of carboxylic acids by thionyl chloride, SOCl2. Recall that carboxylic acids have the general structure shown at the left with a so-called carboxyl group and some alkyl group attached to it, while on the right-hand side, we have the so-called acid chloride, where effectively we replaced an hydroxyl group by a chloride group. Acid chlorides are particularly useful because they act as an activated form of the carboxylic acid, and in many of the reactions for which we might use a carboxylic acid, the acid chloride is more effective and it leads to greater yields and fewer side reactions. By analogy with the SN2 reaction, we can have a acyl nucleophilic substitution where we replace the hydroxide as the leaving group and we have chloride as the nucleophile. Now we know from our experience with alcohols and haloalkanes that while chloride is a good nucleophile, that hydroxide is an extremely poor leaving group. So much so that in general, if we predict that hydroxide is the leaving group, we know that generally no reaction will take place. So we need a special procedure to convert hydroxide into a better leaving group before we can perform some sort of nucleophilic substitution. To achieve the conversion of the carboxylic acid into the corresponding acid chloride, there are three commonly used reagents. The first is SOCl2, which is called thionyl chloride, PCl3, which is phosphorus trichloride, and PCl5, which is phosphorus pentachloride. This video is going to concentrate exclusively on the use of thionyl chloride for this reaction. Thionyl chloride has this general structure. It is a planar molecule with sp2 hybridization on the central sulfur atom. We realize that sulfur is a relatively large electropositive atom, which is directly attached to three electronegative elements. One oxygen, which is the second most electronegative of all the elements, and to two chlorine atoms, which are the third most electronegative element. Because of this, the sulfur becomes rather electropositive, so therefore Sulfur in this particular molecule is going to be prone to nucleophilic attack by nucleophiles. Please see the following figure, which shows the computed uh, atomic charges on each atom. When you see a positive um, atomic charge, that tells you that the uh, atom is relatively electron deficient. And when you see a negative atomic charge, then you have a buildup of a partial negative charge on those particular atoms. It might be somewhat surprising to see that the partial negative charges on the chlorine is slightly larger than the partial negative charge on oxygen. And it might be a surprise because we know that oxygen is more electronegative than is chlorine. There are two things to keep in mind here. The first is, while oxygen is more electronegative than chlorine, chlorine has the largest of all electron affinities, with an electron affinity even greater than that of fluorine, the most electronegative element. The second is, the scheme that is used to compute the uh, atomic charges uh, is commonly the Mulliken system. The Mulliken system is one of many, many different systems that can be used to sort of uh, conjecture on these partial atomic charges and the atomic charges themselves as computed do not have a direct physical basis. 
But the important point is it confirms our suspicion that sulfur is going to be electropositive, electron deficient, and therefore subject to nucleophilic attack. The hydroxyl oxygen of the carboxylic acid is a effective nucleophile because it has at least one lone pair that's available for bonding. Also, recall that carboxylic acids, being acids, are going to be in equilibrium with their conjugate base, which is a carboxylate. So we have cleavage of the oxygen-hydrogen bond to give off hydrogen as H+. Now we have a negatively charged nucleophile, which is even more effective than the carboxylic acid was to begin with. And we have a nucleophilic attack on the electron-deficient sulfur of the thionyl chloride. At the same time, we have heterolytic bond cleavage of one of the sulfur-chlorine bonds with chlorine leaving as chloride. So the result of the first step is the formation of this acyl chlorosulfite. So that's what we call this chlorosulfite here. One of the chlorines from thionyl chloride is still attached, as is the sulfur and the oxygen. The other oxygen here came from the carboxylate. And one of the chlorines has left as chloride. And it's even though it leaves in the first step, it's going to make a dramatic reappearance in the second step. Interestingly, uh, computations of the uh, reaction profile using electronic structure calculations show that this reaction is rather exothermic. But it's exothermic with a very large energy of activation. So, typically, this reaction is performed with gentle heating of the carboxylic acid in the thionyl chloride. In the second and final step, the chloride, which was expelled in the first step, now acts as a nucleophile and attacks the electron-deficient carbon of the carbonyl. But now, rather than having hydroxide, which is a very poor leaving group, we have this chlorosulfide group, which is actually an excellent leaving group. And we have cleavage of the bond here and cleavage of the bond here, so that we have essentially two products, one of which I've omitted here. So chloride leaves as a leaving group, but also these two oxygen atoms and the sulfur leave as sulfur dioxide, which is a gas. And because this escapes from the reaction mixture, this drives the reaction to completion, which is one of the reasons, uh, in addition to converting hydroxide into a better leaving group, but the fact that it drives the reaction to completion is uh, one of the enormous benefits of using thionyl chloride for this chlorination reaction. In this second step, the energy of activation is also very large, and the reaction itself is endothermic. So the way that we're able to uh, achieve this reaction at all is the fact that it goes to completion based upon the generation of gas, which it escapes from the reaction mixture. And secondly is we've continued heating. So we see that in both of the steps, we have a good rationale from our calculations as to why the reaction needs to be heated to proceed. We are going to look in detail at four specific chlorination reactions, particularly because these reactions are interesting in having two separate transition states as opposed to just one. So in our first example, we take formic acid, the simplest carboxylic acid, and react it with thionyl chloride while gently heating. So you can pause the video and predict what the overall major organic product is going to be for this reaction. Welcome back. Hopefully, 
you predicted that the major organic product would have this structure and it is called formal chloride. Please see the following computed structures for the reactants, the products, and the transition states. In fact, there's two different transition states for the conversion of formic acid into formal chloride. In our second reaction, we are going to react acetic acid with thionyl chloride with gentle heating. So now you can pause the video and predict the name and the structure of the resulting major organic product. Welcome back. The product has this particular structure and we call the compound acetyl chloride. It is the acid chloride derivative of acetic acid. For our penultimate, next to last example, we have the reaction of propionic acid with thionyl chloride in the presence of gentle heating. You can pause the video now and write down the structure of the major organic product and write down its proper name. Our product has the structure shown here and this is called propionyl chloride. It is the acid chloride derivative of propionic acid. Please see the following figures showing the computed structures for the various reactants, products, and the two transition states. Our final reaction involves butyric acid heated gently 
with thionyl chloride. You can pause the video now and then write down the structure of the major organic product and write down its name. Welcome back. Our product has the structure shown and this is called butyryl chloride. Please see the following figures showing the computed structures of reactants, products, and the structures of the two transition states. Now, as a final summary, please see Table 1 and Table 2, which shows the computed energies of activation and the energies of reaction for the two steps involved in the chlorination of a carboxylic acid. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, have a good one.